Welcome back. You're watching World Inside. The program is coming to you live from Beijing. Next, we turn to Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Stock Exchange said on Tuesday it had withdrawn a $39 billion proposal to the London Stock Exchange Group to combine the two together. But it still believes that the combination is strategically compelling. The failure of the bold move leaves open the question of what the Hong Kong Stock Exchange might try next to carry out a strategy of being China anchored and globally connected. Take a look. Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing Limited announced on Tuesday it would drop an offer for the London Stock Exchange Group. HKEX Chief Executive Charles Lee said dropping the bid was a disappointment, but it's a rational decision in the interest of its shareholders. HKEX made the 39 billion US dollar takeover bid for the LSEG on September 11. The London Bourse rejected the proposal. The LSEG has long sought to bolster its presence in Asia and launch a link scheme with HKEX's competitor in Shanghai because it values the mutually beneficial partnership with the Shanghai Stock Exchange, which is their preferred and direct channel to access the many opportunities with China. The surprise bid comes amid political turmoil engulfing Hong Kong. In the 2019 Global Competitiveness Report, recently published by the World Economic Forum, Hong Kong is ranked third globally among 141 economies, up four places from last year. But the rankings were determined before the escalation of tensions in the region. So, what's in store for equity markets in the Chinese mainland and Hong Kong? What's the future hub for Asian finance? So what does the withdrawal of Hong Kong exchange bid for London Stock Exchange tell us? What's the real score in Hong Kong? We are joined by Ronald Wan, the CEO of Partners Financial Holdings Limited. Meanwhile, we are joined in Beijing by uh, Mr. Zhang Gong, who is uh, also a professor at the University of International Business and Economics. And at the same time in London, we have uh, Mr. John Ross, a senior fellow with the Chongyang Institute of Renmin University. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. I want to go to you first, Mr. Wen. What does the withdrawal of the earlier proposal mean to Hong Kong Stock Exchange? Uh, I think it is a very disappointing move, but uh, still it is uh, expectable because uh, I think the timing of this bid is really bad, you know, given the situation in UK and given the situation in Hong Kong, UK is having uh, its Brexit and, uh, and the shareholders of the London Stock Exchange don't think the current valuation is a, valid, is, a, is a very feasible one. But the situation in Hong Kong is that Hong Kong tried to uh, enhance its international competitiveness and also enhance its status, status as the international financial center of China. So, given the bid, um, you know, being ended, it means that um, the Hong Kong competitiveness and Hong Kong internationalism uh, and everything will 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 meet will meet some setback in the mm -hmm. time being. Also, I think uh, I think for Hong Kong people and for Hong Kong Stock Exchange, uh, well, how to work out a, a better future, you know, for for the London Stock for yeah. the Hong Kong Stock Exchange elders and for China, I think it is still working out. This is things is really uh, disappointing for the time being. Yes, I understand, <laughs> Professor Gong, your take. Well, I think uh, this uh, bid was not very welcome at the very beginning. I mean, two days after this proposal was made to the London Stock Exchange, the management of LSC put out a very negative report, essentially uh, rejecting this bid, uh, not so much out of the price uh, uh, that it was uh, taken to the exchange, but very much based on a couple of sort of more fundamental reasons. For example, it mentions the regulatory uh, hurdles they have to go through. It questions the, uh, uh, the validity of uh, uh, the synergies uh, of merging them together and a couple of other reasons. So I think the management of the company uh, just doesn't like this idea. And, uh, and, and on top of this, we have this very unfortunate situation going on in Hong Kong. Uh, so I think this, this deal is pretty much there now. 
I see. Mr. Ross, uh, of course you have also been working for the Economic Policy Office of uh, the uh, Mayor of London's office, so you probably could help us understand better about whether Long uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange, if uh, in the future see another opportunity, still have a chance with the London Stock Exchange at all. Yes, well, I was very directly, as uh, the Mayor's Director of Economic and Business Policy, involved in a previous attempt to uh, take over the London Stock Exchange. That was by the US NASDAQ. Uh, you have to understand the position of London Stock Exchange, although it's called London, its real significance is as an international stock exchange. A, a large part of the companies which are listed there are, in fact, international companies. You see, that was London's key strategic advantage. Um, which is, uh, there are a number of companies that for um, regulatory reasons or reasons concerned with U.S. foreign policy don't want to list in, the, in New York, but they want to become linked to an advanced country's uh, stock exchange. London was ideal for that. It, for a period, had a larger number of IPOs from, for example, China than did the New York Stock Exchange. This, is, this advantage is even stronger now because concern about listing in the U.S. is becoming much wider. Therefore, in a certain strategic sense, the link up with Hong Kong was very logical from the country of London. I, I think the obstacle that was raised on the London side is really a political one. The, the London Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, saw itself linking up with European stock exchanges, such as the Deutsche Bourse or Italian Stock Exchange, which took over. So I, I think there was a strong political pressure that was also involved with the London Stock Exchange not going along with Hong Kong. That's that in addition to obviously the negative effect of the rioting that's going on at the moment. Right. I'll go to the other two guests, one in Beijing and one in Hong Kong. Uh, Professor Gong, so do you think the latest move and drama, mm -hmm. in a way, gives us much hint about where the rest of the world sees Hong Kong compared to where Hong Kong sees itself? Um, well, I think Hong Kong will still remain as a, uh, a hub for uh, you know, raising funds, at least in Asia, and also potentially uh, internationally. Uh, you know, Charlie Lee's offer to the LSE uh, is very much premised upon the idea of creating a global stock exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, the, he already owns the, the London Mercantile Exchange, and you know, his bid is to essentially integrate the two exchanges together. In other words, offering a uh, multi, uh, sorry, a global platform across uh, different currencies, across different countries, uh, and it's a, creating a global market. And also, this bid is a condition upon. Uh, the LSC uh, giving up this acquisition bid of uh, yeah. another company. So, so your point Reuters. is, so your the, point the, is the, what? The, the point is that uh, you know he is trying to create a global exchange. Uh, so this is a is pretty much a setback for him. But from a Hong Kong's perspective, uh, it's it's still a very much a vibrant uh, place to raise funds and uh, 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 you know as a financial center mm -hmm. at least for Asia. Uh, so I think that role is not going to go away. Even you know right now we're seeing a temporary setback for his effort to mm. go even more. Mr. Van, of course, uh, Hong Kong for a long time, and rightly so, have been considering itself as the place uh, for uh, the link between China and the rest of the world, and also the financial center uh, in Asia. Uh, now, of course, things have changed. Uh, whether it is for better or for worse for different uh, localities is one question, but how to have a clear assessment of uh, the current status of Hong Kong vis-a-vis -vis others' perceptions about Hong Kong. Uh, do you think the latest uh, drama provide any kinds of hint to elites in Hong Kong and also to policymakers mm. in Hong Kong? Well, frankly speaking, I think the current situation uh, in Hong Kong give uh, investors and give uh, you know uh, not just in Asia, not just investors over the world have a new perception of Hong Kong, yeah. uh, possibly on the negative side, you know. And uh, well, what is Hong Kong can do? What, what Hong Kong can do in the future is to 
um, you know, maintain its competitiveness and uh, maintain its openness. I think the key survival and the for the for, for Hong Kong in the future basically is um, you know for is maintain a, a key you know, international financial center of China. You know. Hong Kong is China because Hong Kong is the international hub for China and also um, it is the only city in China uh, without currency control uh, with uh, uh, free flow of capital and uh, basically it still has its um, you know, competitiveness but still uh, we are facing a mm -hmm. lot of competitions from Shanghai, Shenzhen and you know, all they are opening up as well so I think how to shape up and how to enhance the competitiveness, how to put things on a, a more balanced you know, uh, scenario, I think this is something which Hong Kong needs to work out and things are really challenging for the time being. I think um, you know, the government, SAL government and central government can work out something for Hong Kong and for the Greater Bay Area, you know, how to create a synergy impact and make the market bigger right. for Hong Kong and make the Hong Kong competitiveness uh, uh, you know, better and I think this is something which we need to work on to, to help Hong Kong. It's very interesting, Professor Gong, because one has to help itself. Mm -hmm. in order to be strong. Mm -hmm. it, there's something mm -hmm. that others could do mm -hmm. in order to support, but nobody can determine the fate of mm -hmm. one place or another without enough impetus from within that territory. So, Professor Gong, uh, to what extent do you think uh, the latest in Hong Kong mean for the competi competition earlier already seen among the different stock exchanges uh, in greater China, mm -hmm. not to mention in Asia, mm -hmm. not to forget we also have Japan mm -hmm. and Singapore, mm -hmm. extremely active. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think uh, Hong Kong still differentiates significantly from stock exchanges in Shanghai and in Shenzhen. It's an international market, it's, uh, it's currency, is, uh, you know, it's, it's international currency. It's really you said it already. Yeah, so these are the things that uh, are going to last some time, the round is going to mm. last some time. Now in terms of uh, uh, the question you raised about the uh, Hong Kong uh, government, Hong Kong people resolve their own issues. I think this is, as you said, I mean, this is an issue that uh, they have to work out themselves. Uh, there's only uh, so much that a central government can do. And also, the central government is also constrained by our arrangement with Hong Kong that uh, this is uh, uh, one country, two systems. Right. Uh, so, so, my expectation is that uh, in the next few weeks or so, um, the, uh, the SAR government needs to put things together and uh, resolutely resolve the, uh, you know, the, the, the current uh, turmoil in Hong Kong. At least uh, the violence has to be off the streets. Mm. You cannot let people off the hook. <coughs> Mr. Wen, we understand the chief executive and her office is likely to provide the governance report mm. uh, coming up in the next week. Of course, uh, mm. people are expecting what's likely to be the details, mm. but even the chief executive and the, her office is working in the right direction. Mm. Would different parties, I'm not meaning political parties, but rather different beliefs in Hong Kong will be able to reconcile among themselves? I guess that's probably a, it's a bigger question than just the listening to what the chief executive has to say. Mm, yes, yes, I agree. I think every segment in the society need to reach a compromise and need to have confidence in the government and um, also to work out a solution what uh, Hong Kong you know, can deliver to the country and to the world. So basically I think um, the government uh, will work on something. You know, they are going to make an announcement on next Wednesday, you know, government uh, policy plan you know, how to enhance the uh, society and the stock exchange as well. I think the only survival uh, and way and for Hong Kong to remain uh, to maintain its competitiveness is to uh, increase its uh, communication with mainland and to try to exchange uh, the various you know connection schemes you know with uh, capital centers in China so that everyone in China when they want to connect to the world they can use Hong Kong you I know see. as a gateway and a platform. I think this gateway and this platform need to be enhanced and need to be strengthened you know uh, in her policy plan you know to. Uh, Hong Kong, you know, people and uh, to the people in the country. There well. are already a lot of things going on from the mainland to support Hong Kong. Of course, at this point, it is very hard to convince investors yes. to go there even further uh, to, uh, given the latest situation.
situation. But uh, Mr. Ross, I know you're still online with us. So what do you make of the latest the situation? What would the, it take for Hong Kong to really bring out its uh, uh, competitive edge uh, following the fail of uh, takeover of the London Stock Exchange? Of course, it's only a proposal at this moment. Well, I think the crucial thing is that Hong Kong has got to situate itself firmly as a part of China, as the key uh, financial gateway which is in between China and the world. If we then be strategically, I think that will happen more. I, I personally believe that Chinese companies made a mistake in listing on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. I wrote this at the time uh, because I think the actions of the U.S. against the very large companies such as Alibaba and Chinese companies will increase. Alibaba has already recently been to find that way what you might call a sort of partial listing in Hong Kong. And I think there will be a tendency for Chinese companies to reallocate themselves into Hong Kong. So the real strategic way forward for Hong Kong, because no, no other exchange can have that advantage, hmm. is to see itself very firmly situated with China. Okay. John Ross, John Gong, Ronald Wan, thank you so much, gentlemen, for the three of you joining us. Really appreciate it.